Good morning, uh, Oceanside and everyone out there tuning in. Uh, we just want to say how excited we are that you're joining with us this morning. Uh, we are going to hear from Mike this morning, uh, a little bit out of the Word of God, and also Andy and Camilla are going to be um, leading us in a time of worship. Uh, if you're there, I just want to encourage you, if you have a coffee in your hand or you're sitting, whatever you're doing, is this is a great opportunity for us to position our hearts to um, hear God and trust uh, what it is that he's saying to us. So uh, just as we stand together or sit together in a time of worship, uh, Lord, I just pray that our hearts would be soft, that we would be aware of your presence, that we would be humble and open to hear what you want to say to us and to be open to change. Lord, I pray that we would be people who evolve and change with what you're doing. And I just uh, want to encourage each and every one of us that God is wanting to speak to us this morning and uh, just trust that he would move in our hearts in an amazing way. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn shame into glory 
is with weapons unseen Your enemies crash to their knees As we rise up in worship When trials unleash like a flood The battle belongs to
Well, thanks so much again for uh, joining us this morning. I've just been thinking about uh, the story of Elijah and uh, when he's in total uh, turmoil, he's running away for his life and he cries out to God. He said, there's no one. It's I'm the only one left. And, and God actually says to him, actually, no, I have reserved a whole bunch of people who have not bowed down to other gods who are actually still uh, solely for me and for my heart. And, and just reminding Elijah that he was not alone. And uh, it's a great reminder for us because we've actually um, begun having some men who have started praying together who are passionate about prayer. Uh, if you are a man and maybe you felt like you're on your own, you're out there alone, you're the only one passionate about God in your world, whatever it is, can I encourage you, you are not the only one. There are other men who are standing together uh, outside in a safe distance, you know, all the things. Um, but praying together and believing that God is going to do amazing things in our city. So again, men's prayer is happening uh, on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. And uh, we do have a tent set up and we've got some heaters. And uh, it's a great opportunity uh, for all of us as men to gather and pray earnestly for our city and our community. Um, we've also opened up the Junction Park as a public park to encourage our community to gather. Uh, OCIers and the people in our, in our commu um, immediate community. And it's been so cool to see that it is being utilized, especially with Bonnie Henry uh, letting us know that um, we are now permitted to gather in groups of 10 outside. Um, and it's so exciting to see moms and kids joining together, enjoying our park, enjoying our coffee, all the things, and um, really uh, leaning into community, which has been very hard uh, to fight for over the last year. So that's extremely exciting stuff. And we want to encourage you, um, if you are feeling lonely, if you would like community, if you have kids, whatever it is, um, the Junction is a great spot where you can be outside and enjoy the facilities um, and meet other people who are maybe in the same boat. Uh, with all of that said, uh, we are excited that this morning uh, we get to hear uh, from our leader, Mike Graves, and uh, we're excited to hear what God's put on his heart this morning. Good morning, Oceanside Church. Thank you for inviting us into your homes once again. I thank God for multimedia and the opportunity for us to connect, but Debs and I can't wait to see you in person. Yes, these are difficult times, and yes, for some, the times are more difficult for some than others. But I want to encourage us that in spite of what's going on, God is doing some amazing things in our midst. Oceanside, I just want to give a praise report on what God is doing in the midst of these times. So I'm excited to hear what the staff has as praise reports. And if you have some, We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to share those with the community because that's how faith is built. God is not silent in these times. God is in total control. We know that Jesus is seated on the throne, high and exalted. And without further ado, I'm going to call on Dan first to share a few things and we'll go from there. Hi, Oceanside Church. It's been amazing to be a part of the Oceanside School of the Bible that's been happening on Zoom on Sunday nights for the last month and a half. And so it's been amazing to see just people set free, people healed, people receiving the Holy Spirit, people receiving the gift of tongues and other things during that class. So it's been incredibly encouraging that all of us just gather online and are equipped for the faith and are really encouraged in our walk with Jesus. It's been absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing, you guys, seeing what God's doing here, even at the J. Um, we've had story time with the littles. Kids from like zero to four have been coming out and with their moms and um, just hearing a little bit about God's love. And what happens is afterwards they go and play together, and just seeing those smiles and um, moms getting to socially distance and be able to relate to each other and just sharing this time. It's been such a blessing. And I would love to share about what's happening with the youth and young people right now. It's incredible what God's doing in their hearts and just being able to um, meet as a group. Seeing their hearts just hungry to um, start doing ministry and go out to the streets and be involved in so many different ways. It's just been an incredible time. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Malia. Lisa, and I'm so uh, grateful for this church family because uh, it's really become a family. I often come and uh, bring prayer requests because the team is praying every morning um, for an hour. Uh, sometimes I text my prayer requests and sometimes I come personally uh, 
because I just need that extra support. And so I have such gratitude for all that God has done in my life and done through this family, through this community, through this church. So uh, praise God. Hey Oceanside, it's Brayden. Um, you might have seen me on the booth. Um, I'm just thankful for Easter coming up um, and the outreach we're going to have with the community. If you're watching this, I just encourage you to take part in that. If you see someone in the Superstore, um, just reach out to them, pay for their groceries, pay for their gas. Um, and I'm just thankful for the people that we have in our community that are able to do that. So yeah, I'm just thankful for God's kindness and the hand that he extends towards us and we can extend to others. I must admit, being here in the mornings is definitely my highlight. We come together and we pray, we pray for our community, and we truly trust that you are blessed, that you are feeling the warmth and the love of Jesus, and that, um, yeah, just to be excited that new things are happening. And as Braden mentioned, Easter service is coming up, and it's just a beautiful time for us just to be able to come together with our communities, with our families, and just to celebrate the reason why we do what we do, that like we are part of such a bigger family and we are just so thankful to Jesus. Hey Oceanside, so yeah, there's many amazing things happening and some awesome things coming up. And the thing that I'm most thankful for right now is that there actually seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel. I think every week we come on the, the live service and we say, we can't wait to see you soon. Well, it actually seems like we will be able to see you soon. And honestly, just as I've been connecting with people over the phone or people popping into the office here, there is a real hunger for the church to come back together and for things to be a bit more exciting when we do come back. We don't just want it to be normal. So I am so excited that the weather's going to be getting warmer, that we can start meeting outside as some people already are, and as well that we're going to be able to have church again soon. So we can't wait to see you. We're so thankful. We're praying for you. Church, in the midst of these circumstances, we have seen people being saved. Six people have been baptized, and in response to their baptism, another five or six people are waiting to be baptized in the near future. And over and above all of this, we've had a number of new families added to the church family. God has truly been good to us in these times. And today, I'd like to share some of our vision and our dreams in a nutshell, in a sense. It will be new to some and reminders to others. And the core of our vision statement is simply this, to know Jesus and to make Jesus known in both word and deed, to train and equip our people for works of service in order to be a gathering, healing, training, sending church that is focused on the Great Commission. Shortly after his resurrection, in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus meets with the disciples. And he comes to them and says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you. To the very end of the age. Church, we want to be a church that frames its ministry around these words, to gather, to equip, and to go. Understanding that Jesus never asked the world to come to the church, but for the church to go to the world. In Matthew 9, 36, 38, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. We want to be a church that understands that God has placed us here, both time and space, to make an impact on our city and the nation. According to Acts 17, verses 26 to 27, we read, From one man God made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places that they should live. Church, we are not in Nanaimo and in Canada by, ac uh, by accident. We are on a mission. God did this so that through them, and yes, through us, men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him that is not far from each of one of us. 
Church, we want to be a church that represents Jesus well in word and in deed. Understanding that the way we represent Christ to our families, our friends and our neighbours has eternal consequences. Paul speaks of this in 2 Corinthians 5. And I'm just going to read verse 20 and 21. I ask you to study this passage. And he says this, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making His appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. We want to be a church empowered by the Holy Spirit that conducts itself in a manner worthy of the gospel, according to Philippians 1.27. And finally, we are called to be a people of prayer and faith and not of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power and a sound mind. A fear that contains our effectiveness. And I call it the what-if syndrome that robs us of our God-given inheritance, our dreams, and our internal rewards. In Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7, Paul writes this, Do not be anxious about anything. Church, anything is a big word. There's some things that I'm not anxious about and others that I can become very anxious about. But here's the key. In everything, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what we're going through, God is bigger than them. And this is what it says. In everything, by prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, present our request to God, and then allow the peace of God, which transcends our natural understanding, to guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. In Hebrews 4, the writer writes this, that we are to make every effort to enter into the rest of God. It's interesting that those two words, effort and rest, come together. But that's where we need to train ourselves to still our hearts, to come before God and allow the transcendent peace to fall upon us. For God is with us no matter where we are. No matter what fires we are going through, Jesus never, ever leaves us. I was reading A.W. Tozer the other day, and in one of the chapters he speaks of fear. And I want to share a few little things that I got out of that book. He writes that fear causes us to protect ourselves and to take matter into our own hands rather than trusting God. It causes us to seek the easy decision rather than the right decision. It causes us to seek consensus rather than seeking God. And it keeps a tight hold on our finances instead of us being generous and willing to share. A mentor of mine, Leon Fodal, was preaching and he shared a story about two of his grandchildren. He gave each one of them a chocolate and they held it in their hands. The one little one opened her chocolate and ate it. The other little one wanted to keep it, wanted to hold it. And as much as he told her to open her hand and eat it, she wouldn't. And when she eventually did, the chocolate had melted and it was just one gooey mess. And that analogy is so true to us when we hold on to things that God wants us to let go of. Let us be generous not only with our finances, but with our time, with our love, with our companionship. God is a generous God, so let us be generous to each other in these times. A.W. Tozer also spoke of fear in leaders and how serious it can be because it can lead to control and manipulation. It can lead to that clenched fist where we don't open our hands. So this is as pertinent to a little child as it is to us. Church, we need to constantly remind ourselves that Christ is in us and that we are people of faith and not of fear. Our faith is in God. Our faith is in His Word. 
Our faith is not in ourselves. In Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 2, we read that now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not believe. This is what the ancients commended for. Speaking of Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 2, this is what Spurgeon writes. By faith all things become possible to us. Yet the power is not in the faith, but in the God in whom our faith relies. We need to remind ourselves daily that the power of our salvation lies in the strength of our God and not in the strength of our faith. We must fix our eyes on Jesus and take them off ourselves. His word doesn't instruct us to grow our faith by pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. And most important, he doesn't forsake us if we can't conjure enough, enough faith for the circumstance. And most important, he promises not to forsake us if we can't conjure up enough faith for our circumstance. J.B. Philip writes this, We all tend to shrink our concept of who Jesus really is and what he promised to do in and through us to the size of our circumstance. And any God who fits into the context of me can never really be God. Isn't that so true? The question we should be asking ourselves is not how big is our faith, but how big is our God? You see, Jesus is not only the author and the initiator of our faith, but he is also the perfecter of our faith. And in him and through him, church, we can do all things through Christ that gives us strength. Church, as we begin to focus on Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection in the coming weeks, let us remind ourselves afresh who Jesus really is. Yes, he is the Lamb of God that came to take away the sin of the world. But he also is the resurrected King of kings and the Lords of lords. Yes, thank God for Easter Sunday when he rose from the dead. Paul in Colossians 1 verses 14 to 20 speaks of the majesty and the glory of the resurrected Christ. In verse 14 he writes, In him we have redemption through the forgiveness of sins. Verse 15 he writes, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Verse 16, For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Verse 17, Jesus is before all things, and in him all things are held together. That includes you and I. When we feel like falling apart, Jesus keeps us together. He's an amazing God. Verse 18, and this is speaking of the church, it says that He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in everything He has preeminence and supremacy. Verse 19, what an amazing passage. Go and study this. In Him, the fullness of God is pleased to dwell. And this is the most amazing thing. He reconciles all things to himself, whether on earth or in heaven. And he makes peace by his blood shed on the cross. What an amazing love story. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. And whomsoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I know we focus on Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and that's very important. But I wonder how much love, the incredible love that God had, that He would send His only Son to pay the price for our sins. And church, I also want to remind us this, that we serve a mighty warrior king, the king of kings, and the lords of lords, and his eyes are like blazing fire. 
And when John saw the resurrected Christ for the first time in the book of Revelation, he fell on the floor as though dead. And Jesus picks him up and loves on him. And that's the God we serve. And church, this is the most amazing thing, is that Jesus, this mighty warrior God, lives within us. It is Christ in you and I that is the hope of glory. And church, we have been called, commissioned, and given all authority in and through Jesus Christ to go into all of our world, our harvest field, which is Nanaimo, Canada, and then to the end of the world, and to make disciples of all nations. Church, this is an incredible time to reach out to people who are hurting, who are lost. Let us be bold. Let us share the love of Christ. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in word. It can be in deed. Let our light shine before men, that they might see our good deeds and glorify the Father in heaven. Isaiah in Isaiah 52, verses 6 to 8, speaking about us proclaiming the gospel in advance here, in effect. He writes this, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who will bring the good news who proclaim peace and bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, the Lord reigns. Listen, you watchmen, lift up your voices. Together they shout for joy. And this is it. And when the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. It's amazing how Paul picks up uh, uh, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, picks up on this theme in Romans chapter 10, verse 11 to 15. And this is what he writes under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, speaking of the heart of God. Verse 11, as Scripture says, anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. That includes you and I. For there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses all who calls on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And here we hear the heart of God for the lost. As Isaiah continues to write this passage. And we hear the heart of God in this. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone speaking or preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the, the, uh, the good news. Church, we just heard in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, that He has commissioned and sent all of us to be his hands, his feet, his arms, to love people and to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, we hear the same question. And I love Isaiah's response. He's in the throne room and it says, I heard, verse 8, I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And he sticks up his hand and he says, here am I, send me. Church, God is in control. He isn't surprised about what's going on, but he's going to make a way for us. And that Christ still rings out from heaven today. Church, we are the priesthood of believers. We have the authority of Jesus Christ, the power of Christ, the presence of God, Christ right within us. And that cry is running, who will go? And who will I send? And I pray that we, instead of focusing on ourselves, focusing on our, on our circumstances, will lift our eyes, see Jesus Christ high and lifted up, like Isaiah did. That our hearts will be undone, as we, and that our hearts will be broken for the last Lord. Church, is time for harvest. It's ripe unto harvest. And I just want to encourage you in this time, so one might sow, another will water, but it's God that will make it grow.
And as I've said, we can sow through love, forgiveness and acceptance. We can create an atmosphere that softens their heart through the power of the Holy Spirit, that the seed that is sown, the seed of our love, forgiveness and acceptance, the seed of the gospel can take root. We don't plant seeds and dig them up every week, but we can plant seeds in people's hearts. And as Paul said, I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God is the one that made it grow. Let's plant seeds in our city, church. Let's reach out. Let's go and make disciples. Let's enjoy this journey with God, for He's on the move. For such a time as this, we are here. Oceanside and every church is a, dis a planting of the Lord. And the reason, even as Isaiah says, is for the display of His splendor. Let's do that well. May God richly bless you. And in closing, I would love to pray for us. Father God, I thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. I thank you, Lord, that my faith doesn't have to be in me. I thank you that my righteousness is not in me, but it's in and through you, Lord Jesus. For you love us. You care for us. You died for us, Lord. And Lord, you've filled us with this incomparably great power that is for us who believe. And Lord, I pray we'll go in the power of the Spirit and reach out to our friends, neighbors, and families, be it online, be it reaching out in any way, Lord God, through prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. Let us present our, friends, our request to God. Allow the peace of God to come upon us and let us go and make disciples of all nations. God bless you and have a great week. Thank you. It all revolves around your throne Who can know your glory So high above Yet slain for us, you alone are worthy. And the praise is yours, and the praise is yours. You're the one we bow before. Reigning over us as we lift you up.
Savior's love through the storm. 
in the crashing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I never surrender, you are breaking. Trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. Cause God, I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus. In the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I never surrender. You are breaking new ground. You are breaking.
Once again, uh, for, for joining with us this morning, and Mike, thanks for sharing the word this morning. We trust that you have left encouraged um, and excited and passionate about what lies ahead. Um, if you have uh, any prayer requests, whatever it is, please feel free to reach out to us direct. You can send us an email or a phone call, um, and we will continue to pray as the staff stands every morning and prays for our community and our city. We will continue to do that, and uh, please be encouraged. Uh, we love you very much and we're excited to see you right back here next week.